So welcome everybody. I'm so glad you were able to join us this evening. And my na name's Nancy Howell, and I'm one of the board members of Western Cuyahoga Audubon. But the reason we're really gathering tonight is because, you know, Western Cuyahoga Audubon is really trying to be forward thinking, where, where we know you're kind of stuck at home, you know you can't go too many places, and uh, we want to keep you, our members, and our visitors to our website, and our guests connected, and uh, just having a good time while this COVID situation goes on. So our board and different people uh, on, on, uh, on our board have come up with some fun ideas and activities that are going to be coming up this uh, fall and into the winter. Um, so we want to just keep our, our members and guests informed. We want people to have some fun while doing it. And you know what? It is also for some fundraising. So we want to friend raise, and we do need to fundraise for our chapter. Because, you know, we're, we're trying to get the word out to so many people, so many places. And that takes a little bit of time and a little bit of money, too. So uh, I hope you'll, you'll follow along with all of our fun things that I have to mention this evening. And if you have a question, if something's not clear, Please feel free to put it in the chat, or you can raise your hand, and uh, we'll, we'll be able to uh, listen to what you have to say and uh, see what's, uh, what's going on. So we have a couple of challenges, um, and I'm going to just list them off. First of all, we have what's called the dead tree birding challenge. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, there's dead trees around neighborhoods. There's dead trees in parks. There's dead trees in cemeteries. And guess what? Birds love to sit in dead trees. Um, the dead branches, limbs, twigs, even the trunk uh, are perfect places for uh, birds to perch, to sing, to preen, to watch for prey. And we have a challenge for all of our visitors, our members, and guests to go out. There's four days that this challenge will take place in September. Friday, September 11th, Saturday the 12th, September 12th, Sunday, September 13th, and Monday, September 14th. Now, do you have to go out all four days? Nope. You can do one day. You can do all four days. You can be out several hours each day. But well, all we want you to do is to find a dead tree, or mostly dead tree. And uh, it, could be, it, it should be in your neighborhood. We don't want you to travel too far away from your yard or your neighborhood. Three miles, we're asking, okay, is the distance. So if, you're, if it's in your backyard, fabulous. If it's down the street in a little green space, a park, fabulous. If you have to travel about three miles to a, a park nearby, wonderful. So we don't want you to travel too far. We want to keep it really local. And we want you to be able to just sit for a couple of hours each day, one day, a couple times a day, and watch that dead tree, your dead tree. And just check off, keep tally of the number, or not the number, but the species of birds that visit and perch and sit on that or use that dead tree in some way, shape, or form. Um, a couple of quick things, too, about that dead tree uh, challenge is that, no, we're not going to do a, a how many you particularly see. We're going to do a collective. Um, we want to see if we can get 50 species, five zero species that have been cited uh, using dead trees from everybody's checklist that comes in over those four days. So my challenge to all of our members and guests who are part of this challenge is, again, sending your information in and um, being able to, okay, again, get 50 species or more over those four days. Um, 
I'm just taking a quick look at a chat. Ah, yeah, we got some, some neat picked photos of dead trees. Uh, I don't know if everybody can go look into the chat. And, you know, it looks like um, some of those trees are partially alive. That's fun, or that's fine. Um, if there's a little bit of, of, of liveliness to the tree, that's fine. It should be mostly dead. Um, it could be standing. It could be a tree that has fallen into the water. I saw a really cool one uh, not too far away at Wallace Lake, and I said, oh, it's a dead tree, but it's fallen into the lake. And I thought, well, that could be a perfect hunting place for a great blue heron or a green heron or maybe a, a little flycatcher called a Phoebe to perch on. So you just never know. So your tree could be standing or it could be a fallen dead tree. Um, a couple of quick things that you might want to think about in selecting the tree that you're going to be observing. And again, you have to observe the same tree. One day you can't look at one tree and the next day another tree. Look at the same tree all of, the, all of those days. Um, is to... Um, Find a tree that might have a little bit of different habitat around it. If you have a, a neighborhood, that's fine because you've got mowed grass, you've got other trees nearby. If you're, let, let's say, at a cemetery, maybe the cemetery has, again, some mowed grass, that's habitat. It may have some neighborhood around it, that's a slightly different habitat. There may be some, some a little forest associated with that cemetery. A third type of habitat. The more diversity of habitats that you have nearby, the more diversity of birds that you're likely to see or, or have perched in the dead tree. Um, so try to select a tree that might have, again, not only a trunk, but thicker limbs, slightly thinner branches, and even the little twigs, because a hummingbird probably is not going to sit on a great big limb but it'll use those little twigs, whereas a red-tailed hawk or a vulture might like those nice, sturdier limbs. So again, a diversity of the tree. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. Um, but I'm just giving you maybe some cl uh, clues and hints as to, you know, how to make it a little bit more diverse for, for uh, yourself and for the birds. Um, so again, having some surrounding vegetation would be nice if there's some live trees, some bushes, uh, that type of thing. If you're observing in the morning or in the evening, make sure the sun is at your back. Because if you're looking at the tree and the sun is behind it, you're just going to get silhouettes and you're not going to be able to tell really much about the birds. Yeah, that's a big one and that's a little one. <laughs> that's about all you're going to be able to tell. So make sure the the sun is at your back and so that the, the light will be on that tree and the birds that come and visit. And you know what? I'll bet you're going to see a few other things visiting that tree. I've seen dragonflies on the trees. Um, there may be some snakes. Oh, I love snakes. So you may see a snake uh, around the trees, although it's getting, you know, September could be a little cool for snakes. But you know, we'd love you to take photographs of your tree. Maybe there's a bird in it, maybe not. Uh, if you have a video, maybe a bunch of birds that has come into your tree and you can get a video of that. We'd love to see that too. We'd love to have that shared uh, along with the list that you're, you are creating. Now, you know, we want this to be fun. So we hope that you maybe choose a, a family member or a friend, but re Please remember those COVID precautions. We want you to be safe. So sit, sitting at least six feet apart, uh, having masks, uh, and hand sanitizer, and not large groups. Again, try to have it fewer than 10, and I'm even going to suggest fewer than five. But, uh, you know, make it, make it a fun activity, too. Pack yourself a, a breakfast picnic uh, or a brunch, you know. Ha sit out there and enjoy. Um, bring your lawn chair and sit out there. Make it comfortable for yourself. Uh, maybe you've chosen a, a tree in a park where there's picnic tables. Fabulous. Maybe there's not a whole lot of good seating where you've chosen your tree. Uh, sit in your car, open up the hatchback, sit back there, relax a little bit. 
and uh, again, eat something, and even take pictures of your of your picnics. That that would be really fun too. So we would really really like to be able to um, see the photos that you've taken of not just your tree, but also you guys having fun out there as well. So uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions uh, about this dead tree birding challenge. Remember, it's four days. You can go out one day, two days, three days, or all four. Um, you can use the same checklist, and there, uh, the bird checklist will be on a link that you can uh, download. And um, just make a check. Yep, I saw this bird. I saw that bird. Fabulous. We, we'd love to have, have your join. So um, does anybody have any questions? Yes, Nancy, I have two. Okay. You talked about dead trees in the water. Mm -hmm. um, and should those be fallen trees or one of those trees that you see in the metro parks that you walk along and there's kind of a little swampy, boggy area and they have the trees sticking out. Would that be a good uh, place to sit and observe? Uh, that would be fine, either a standing tree or a fallen tree. Again, uh, you know, sometimes people think a dead tree is always standing, but not always. That's why I was, when I took my little walk and I saw this dead tree that had fallen into the lake, I said, hey, that's a, a perfectly good tree that somebody could observe as well. So it doesn't matter. Okay, and then do dead trees support one in the, more than one species at a time? Or if you see a red, well, I wouldn't think. If you saw a red-tailed hawk, there's probably not too many other birds around that. But like, say, the smaller birds, could you see um, a few species in the tree at the same time? Oh. or? Well, they fly away and then another one comes. How does, how? Well, how do you like this answer? Yes. <laughs> uh, first okay. of all, yes, you're probably going to get something coming in and something else taking off. Or it's going to be, uh, you know, going to be looking at the tree, nothing, 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 and then something comes in. And you know what else is going to happen? I found this with myself. Uh, I've been looking at some, uh, some dead trees, and I've chosen one that I like looking at. But the birds are sitting in the one next to it. And I'm saying, come, come on, move over to my tree. I want to count you. So, again, it, it almost becomes yours, which is really kind of fun. Um, but then you also asked, uh, could there be several birds in a tree? Yes. Uh, I think I took a photograph around Lake Isaac, and I'm not sure if it's one that's in the chat. What was in there? Let's see. There were house sparrows. There was cedar waxwing. And there were red-winged blackbirds, all in the same tree at the same time. So, so that that's a possibility. And you mentioned about red-tailed hawk. So let's say there is a hawk in a tree. Uh, other birds might come and mob it. You know, they come dashing at it and trying to chase it away. Blue jays being notorious, that blue jay lands on a branch. Boom! There's another one you can add. So, so even even a mobbing jay could potentially be another bird that that you add to that list. So so these are great questions. Thank you. Thanks for mm -hmm. answering. Yep. Yeah, I'm not recognizing the photograph there that I'm that's in the chat, the one with the more vegetation. I don't know who's that. Um, is. this is Betsy Penny sent in we have now have a, a growing album of photos of Disney. Oh okay. <laughs> And all right. Penny went out and uh, sent and took many photos from all over and sent them in. I'll I'll post the link to the Flickr um, album. Okay. Of photos. All righty, and of course you have to register, and there is a link for registration. It's very easy. Uh, entry tickets. Um, and of course our bird list will also be uh, there on the link so that it can be downloaded and uh, or if you don't want to use a check checklist just write all the species down that you that you notice and uh, send them in to info at wcaudubon.org by midnight of Monday September 14th and then we'll uh, oh and then we're also going to have a wrap-up session on Saturday, September 26th at 7, 
via free conference call. And this wrap-up session will be, again, photographs that people send in. There'll be the list that will have been tallied, um, videos, pictures of their pic people having their picnics. So it, it should be a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of fun talking, stories that people have had. I can imagine, you know, if you have your um, your folding chair and you're sitting near a, a trail and people are like, okay, what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching this dead tree to see what birds sit it. Okay. So, you know, you might see some eye rolling or you might just get people excited. Like, did you know that this bird was seen perched in that tree? It's so awesome. So, again, get excited about it. It, it should be a lot of fun. I can't wait. All right. No other questions on the dead tree birding challenge? No? All righty. A second challenge, which is going to be a little tougher, uh, it's really meant for some of those hardcore birders, but we would like for others to be involved, is called the Fall Warbler Challenge. Now, warblers, people love to see them in the spring. Bright, beautiful, male, beautiful colors, vibrant, fall, those confusing fall warblers. People go, ugh. Well, they're not that confusing, and they're actually kind of fun to, to try to decipher what species is which. And so that's what our challenge is for the fall warbler challenge, is to find as many of the fall warblers coming through our area as possible. Now, for this... You've got two whole months. So starting September 1, which is right around the corner, until the end of October, October 31st, you can go out anywhere in the county in which you live. So yes, if you live in Medina County, visit anywhere you want. If you live in Cuyahoga County, visit anywhere you want in those two-month period. Uh, and keep track of the species of warbler that you see. Uh, there is a, a tracking sheet that uh, it can be downloaded. It, we're going to ask you to list the date that you were out as well as the area you visited. And you can visit the same area 10 times in those two months. You can visit 10 areas in those two months, two, 10 different areas in those two months. Uh, so you can go anywhere within the county in which you live, okay? Um, so the fall warblers are all listed there. All you have to do is simply check, yep, I saw a hooded warbler this fall, and I saw a bay-breasted warbler, and I saw a uh, black-throated green warbler on this date. So we'd love to have uh, our, 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 as many warblers sighted as possible. Some of them are going to be a little harder to find if, and maybe not even found at all in the fall. Because in the fall, the warblers don't concentrate like you may see them in the spring in particular areas. Uh, they'll be a little bit more scattered, but, um, but you can get a nice variety at different places. So uh, you'll want to enter that fall warbler challenge. Again, only in the county where you live. Use the chart uh, that we have provided as a link on the link. Um, if you're going out with friends or family, to remember the COVID precautions, wearing a mask, distance at least six feet apart, try to have five or fewer in a group, and uh, again, just really uh, be, be very, very careful because we want you to bird for the rest of your life. <laughs> Um, we would like you to turn in those observations to info at wcaudubon.org by midnight on um, November 1st. And uh, we'll, again, a tally will be made. Um, if you have photographs, if you have videos of maybe some of the species that you saw, uh, we'd love to have those turned in as well. And uh, this then uh, we'll also do a wrap-up session uh, on the Fall Warbler Challenge, and that'll take place on Saturday, November 14th at 3 in the afternoon. So 
participants, friends, guests, whomever can join in. Uh, they can see what, what uh, the lists look like, what people have been seeing, uh, if there's photos or videos, the stories. We'll go through the list and see um, what was cited. There will be um, some prizes for the highest number of species cited and recorded. So a first, a second, and a third prize. I can't tell you what the prizes are right off the top of my head right now. So, but, but it's going to be great. I'm just going to take a real quick look at our chat, see if there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions so far on the Fall Warbler Challenge? Yes, uh, Nancy, I have two. Um, are there some areas, being a beginning birder, I really don't know the first, I do know the, the cemetery by me, Riverside Cemetery in the spring is a lot of birders are there because the warblers come in, but will that be a place where I could find warblers uh, in the fall? I mean, is there a certain type of habitat that we should kind of go for or I do know that they like tall trees, and that's one reason they're very difficult to find if you don't know their bird song. So mm -hmm. um, I just was wondering if there was any couple of tips you could give me. Good question. Um, first of all, Riverside Cemetery could be very good. Um, I've never been there in the fall for warblers, but as long as there's, again, a variety of habitat. A lot of the warblers in the fall, again, they're, they're filling up on, on nutrient-laden insects as well as sometimes some fruits because there are some, some uh, warblers that will eat some fruits. And if, if there are thickets, so think about thickets. Think about places where there might be bushes that are a little bit overgrown or, or things that are all kind of brushy. There may be, that might be a really good place to look as well. So it's not always up in the tallest trees. Uh, morning is always a better time to go out than, let's say, uh, an afternoon or an evening. Um, Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve, I find, is a very good place. Um, at, near me, again, any of the metro parks uh, would be very good. And usually, the fall warblers, they're starting to dribble in right now. Um, middle to middle September through middle of October are the, the best times, um, you know, but that depends on the weather too. If you've got a cold front moving the birds from the, from the north, they're going to be pushed southward. So that, that you got to watch the, got to watch the weather too. Um, my second question is about the prizes. Um, the prizes, I would suspect, are based on the number of warbler species that you find, because you did say we could put all the species down, but I, I thought maybe that for the challenge of receiving a prize, it would be the warbler species that you... Right, it's just the warblers, yeah. I mean, you could look at other birds, too. But it's just the warblers that we're looking for, and the prizes will be first first place, first prize will be for the most warblers somebody has cited. Second will be for the second number, highest number they've cited. Um, and this is all, you know, we're we're trusting you to you know be honest that uh, you know yeah I saw all these warblers, but you know we want to make sure that that people are honest. And I'm I, you know birders. I don't think we have a problem with that. So, <laughs> yeah, people are pretty good about that. So this is really on the honor system. Um, yeah. yeah. So this one's, again, like I say, a little, a little more challenging. But if you know if you have a, a good birder and maybe somebody who's a little bit newer, um, again, the more eyes, the better. You know, because somebody might be seeing something. Hey, I see something in that bush over there, but I'm not sure what it is. So, so it's always good to to maybe have a second person, a friend, a, a family member, to go out. Cool. 
Okay. Any other questions? All right. Another fun challenge that we have coming up, uh, this, mm, I guess you could call it late fall, is what I'm calling the fledgling birding challenge. Now, somebody might get confused and say, fledglings, what, at this time of the year? No, 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 we're not looking for baby birds. We're endearingly calling people who are new to birding or maybe families with youngsters, we would call you fledglings. Uh, you're ready to, to get out there and leave the nest and go birding. So that's why we're calling it the fledgling birding challenge for families, with youngsters, newer birders, maybe somebody who's homebound and maybe they just have not looked at birds uh, in, in a certain way. So, so we want those folks to come go out as well too. So this will take place on one day. This is on Friday, November 27th, which is the day after Thanksgiving. And I think it's probably a, a, a day that people will want to get out. You know, you've eaten a big meal, got family over. You want to just get a little bit of exercise. So, yeah, why not take, take a, your family, maybe a friend out. Again, watch the pre, uh, COVID precautions. We want you to make sure you're all safe. And we'd like you to enter for our fledgling birding challenge. Uh, we will also we will have a list of birds with uh, 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 the names of the bird as well as a, a picture, a photograph of the bird, so that if you're not familiar with a red-bellied woodpecker um, that's on the list, you'll see, oh, so that's what it looks like. And if I see it, I'll put a check. There's actually 20 birds we'd like you to find. 19 of them are birds that are likely to be found uh, around the, the end of, of November. Could be in your neighborhood or a park nearby. But number 20 is a bird of your choice. So maybe it's not a bird that's on our list, but something that you've seen. So that, that would be wonderful. I can't wait to see what people have added as their bird of choice. So 19 species that we want you to find and then have fun finding that 20th species of your choice. I wonder if anybody's going to take a picture of their Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So simply check off the species as they're found. Um, turn in the, your list, photos, videos by the end of the day on November 27th. And we're going to, again, just have a, a really good time just looking at those uh, at those um, uh, photos, going through the list, see what people found, some stories, that type of things as well. I know there's going to be some prizes for this as well, too. And uh, so the, stay tuned. Watch our website. We'll, we'll keep things updated for, for our prize uh, awards for that. All right. Does anybody have a question on the fledgling birding challenge. I have a question. This is oh, Betsy. Um, now for the fledgling birding challenge, will there be a wrap up where, or a community where everyone gets together and looks at and um, hears the story about what everyone saw? You know, I don't know if we've come up with a date for a wrap up for that one. That would be fun. That would be fun. So again, we'll we'll keep everybody updated, and that will probably you know it usually takes a little while to get to get the videos and photographs in. We'd like to have them sent in as soon as possible. So our wrap up will probably be sometime in you know the early part of December. So yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, these these challenges fun. again are meant to get have you come out, just see what Western Cuyahoga is doing. Um, keeps you informed and, and busy and fun because that's one of the important things is uh, to while this COVID situation is going on get out make the most of the outdoors have a little bit of fun well I have one more question so we have a lot of uh, audiences online that follow WCAS posts and stuff like that so can, could someone in another state participate in any of these? I don't see why not. I don't think any of our, 
our challenges say, or, hey, or you can another country. That would be awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't that, that be fun? That would be fabulous. Oh man, I I hope that if we do, maybe maybe we need to really highlight that in some way, shape, or form. No That's matter a good idea. where you are. No matter where you are, just look at the date, look at the time, um, look at what you have around you. Oh, ooh, man, I, I hope we get some, something in from someplace else. That would be so great. Our international uh, uh, birding. Fantastic. Well, well besides... Yeah. Okay. Is that uh, Betsy? Did you have another question? No, that was okay. for my mom. I have a question. All right, Karu. So, is the math test including uh, fall challenge or uh, different? Well, that was just going to get into the mask contest. Ah, good. Yes, very good. <laughs> yes. So the first three we covered are challenges, where you know you go out. This net, this last. It's not a challenge. That's why I kind of kept it for last. It's called a bird mask contest. You, we would like for you to become a bird. And since we've got to wear these masks anyhow, why not turn it into something fun? And so our challenge or, or for or the contest is to actually create some kind of 3D beak on a mask. Please use a mask that you can either purchase at a store. I got these uh, at Marks for like, I think there's two of them in this package for $1.99. Uh, I like this one because it says protective mask, and then it has it in French too, masque de protection. So those are really ritzy masks, right? Yeah. So anyhow, I've got this cool mask. I like this one. It's sturdy. I like the, the things that wrap around the ears too. Because I can envision me adding a nice, I don't know, it could be construction paper, it could be felt, it could be foamy stuff. I might want to put some artificial feathers, some feathers on it, um, some glitter, who knows what I can use to create a bird's beak. Now, we actually have two categories that people could sign up for. Uh, one is an actual species of bird. So let's say I want to join and I register and I want to I want to do a mask of a bald eagle. So that's a that's an honest to goodness bird. You can find it in a bird uh, book on a bird checklist. The bald eagle. All right. So I'm going to turn my mask into a bald eagle beak. But you know what? There's a lot of great things out there that people can think of. Maybe I want to do something fanciful, something fictional. Uh, a, a phoenix or, or a bird's name that you, you make up. And so the bird beak, the other category is the fictional or made up bird. And uh, so we'd like to see those as well. Now, since there's so many good artists out there, no matter what your age, we also do have a list of age ranges from, um, from, young, from young people. I, I think it, that start at, um, uh, what, I'm trying to think, like age four to seven. I know we have several age ranges in our, in our mass contest. So we have young youth category, we've got young adult, we've got adult, we've got senior. And so there's so many different ways that you can, can register. Real bird or fictional bird, and then of course your age category. And then a whole family could join in too. Man, I could see the TikTok videos coming in on this. That would be awesome. That would be so fun. But what's even more fun is that the voting uh, will take place, oh, let me tell you the dates that this mask making will begin. It begins on Sunday, October 9th through Sunday, October 18th, All right? So you have like a week, maybe a little over a week to get your mask created out of whatever materials. Again, we're asking you to use only the mask that goes from nose to chin. Please don't make any mask going around your eyes. Yes, you might have a few things that stick out from the mask, 
that that is part of your mask. But, but again, we're not talking about an entire face. We're just talking about a, a half of a mask. Um, so once, once your mask is done, take photos, take videos, do a little song and dance and TikTok, turn it in, and voting is going to be done by our visitors and members of WCAS, our website. And voting will take place October 19th through the 25th of each of these categories. So the, the youth category, there'll be a prize, and the senior category, there'll be a prize, and young adults. So there'll be prizes galore for, um, for these masks. We, I can't wait to see the creativity that people are going to have with the mask contest. So this should be fun since it's right around Halloween. And then you could wear it at Halloween or next time you go to the grocery store, wear your bird beak mask and see what reactions people have. That, that should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to make mine. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to make. All right. So I know there might be a couple questions there regarding the mask contest. Did I answer your question, Peru? Yes. Okay. It, it's good to know. Good. Okay. So, so two categories, right? The two, again, either fictional bird or real bird, and then of course the age, mm -hmm. the age categories too. So how how can I vote that? Uh, did and then you, you then you want to vote? Explain it. Yes. The voting will take place because there's going to be a gallery of photos or mm -hmm. videos, right? So there's going to be, uh, Betsy, maybe you can help me. So we're going to get all these photos and videos in. People will look at them, and then they'll be able to check, hey, I like this one from this family or this youngster, or I like this one from this adult. Yeah, so um, I'm, Betsy will know a little bit more about how that voting will look. Uh, and how you are able to vote. Hmm. Well, I created a gallery at the website, so we'll post all of the photos to the gallery um, and then have a voting form. We can mm -hmm. number number the photos and then people can vote um, to you know how how uh, what they would award each mm -hmm. each photo. <laughs> so they can just like a uh, Put the number they like or like that? Yes. Okay. That would be easy for everyone. Yeah. It'll be easy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so know. I have um, a question. Okay. Will fanciful birds and the actual birds, will they be two different categories? Well, yes, two different, different categories. categories. Uh -huh. So they'll both be a prize for a fanciful bird and a uh, uh, real species, a real bird. There okay. will be. Mm -hmm. So, yep. so, they so ho hopefully we get in so many uh, <laughs> entries that, yeah, that we'll have at least some in each age category and some in each of the fictional as well as real bird category. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I can't wait. So I hope that that will really help make our, our fall uh, fun and make fall zoom by really fast because there's just so much going on and we'll get you out, uh, get you birding and you know just uh, tuning into Western Cuyahoga Audubon because there is just so much besides these challenges and, and the contests of course we have our, our, our monthly programs, we're looking at some um, speakers to do book uh, talks about books and, and authors uh, talking. Um, we're looking at photography contests. So there's just so much that we would like to have many, many, many people involved with. And I know the fall and early winter is going to zoom by. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more later about the Christmas bird count, which will be occurring at the end of December. And that'll be coming up. That'll be our challenge at the end of December into early January. 
but I don't want to get into winter quite yet. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody and thanks for your questions. Um, really do look at the website and things are going to be kept updated so as we get more information, maybe as question, different questions come in, we'll be able to answer those questions. But we appreciate you tuning in. Thanks, everyone.